All right. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the second GDSC DevFest McMaster event of this week. Uh, my name is Harman. I am the community co lead at GDSC McMaster U and will be your host for today. Today, we have a special guest to help us gain more insight into the topic of accessibility in Android. We are joined by Nav Singh, a Google developer expert in Android technologies. He currently works at Manilife as a senior Android engineer and has a significant experience in dealing with Android technologies. Um, today, Nav will do a presentation for approximately 40 to 45 minutes on accessibility in Android and how we can use Jetpack Compose to help develop accessible Android apps. You will then have the opportunity to ask Nav some questions regarding the material he presented, Android, or his work in general. Um, the Q&A session will be moderated. Um, so if you have any questions during this present during his presentation, please put it in the Q&A chat, and I will ask him to answer them live at the end of the presentation. Nav, pass the floor to you now. Thanks, thanks, Arman, for the quick intro. So just to confirm, you guys see my screen, right? We can see your screen, yeah. So let's start with the today's session. So in this session, we will uh, <clears throat> go through the couple of uh, major topics related to accessibility. So we will go through the basic definitions of accessibility, then we will go through how we can implement accessibility in our Android applications if we are developing using old UI toolkit, which is based on XML. And then we will see how we can achieve the same thing if we are implementing it using the new toolkit, which is Jetpack Compose. And then we will see how we can test it which is really important. Like we have done our implementation part and then we will see <clears throat> we, we, what are the tools available for us and how we can manually test it and what are other options in terms of automation, automating UI testing along with the accessibility testing. So let's get started with the basics. So <clears throat> what is accessibility means in terms of uh, in our industry, for example, in software industry, or I can say like in a, in terms of applications. So that means like if we are trying to make sure that our application is accessible to people, those who have some sort of disabilities, for example, some people, those who have colorblindness, or maybe they have some other sort of issues. As you can see on my screen, like there are a couple of, um, like there are different categories mainly we put them in uh, three categories, permanent, temporary, and situational. And as you can see, there might be a, they have some sort of like a one arm or they're blind or they are deaf. And there are other examples. So what's the impact of accessibility in terms of applications? So we are in this <clears throat> talk specifically focused on Android. So I will speak related to Android. So the major impact is like it will increase the apps reach. So as per the World Bank reports, it's there estimately 15% of the population have some sort of disabilities. So if we are as a developers, we provide accessibility support into our applications. That means we are covering that part, which ultimately grows the number of installations of our application or our product. And the second, <clears throat> second uh, point is improving the versatility. So what I, I mean is like in the previous slide, when we are talking about accessibility, sometimes we feel that we are only trying to providing like only trying to make sure that it's accessible for the people, those who have some sort of disabilities, but it also provide versatility to the people or the folks, those who have, don't have any sort of disabilities. That means like they can also use tools that are used by the people, those who have some sort of disabilities, maybe like uh, external keyboards or uh, switch-based navigations or tools like talkback, screen readers. So 
how Android enables accessibility, there are a couple of options, the, but the major one is like uh, mostly the screen reader. It also, we also call it like a talkback, which provides the spoken feedback to the user. So whatever is currently presented on the screen, it will be like as user navigates through different components for, of the screen, it provides a spoken feedback for all those components. So <clears throat> how we can make our applications accessible? There are a couple of options. The first one is task flows. So here we need to figure out like what are the important task flows are in our application. So for example, let's say I'm working on a banking application and we have like a 10 or 20 use cases, but we need to figure out what are the, let's say top five or the most important for our end users. For example, in case of bank, there might be a, like a transferring of ban, uh, balances between the accounts or interacts, things like that. So we need to make sure that those tasks are there easily achievable or users can easily perform those tasks without any kind of hurdles. And the second point is action target size. I will uh, explain in the next slide, like how we can make sure like in Android, we mostly follow material design guidelines. So I will, we need to actually make sure that everything where user can interact with, for example, buttons or text where user can put some sort of text, text and there are like whatever component which is interactive or user can tap on it, it must follow these guidelines to make sure that it's accessible. Third is labeling the user interface controls. So in here we will see later some of the examples like how we can make sure that our components are properly labeled so that when user is, <clears throat> users they are using some sort of accessibility tools it provides uh, meaningful uh, information related to all those components that are currently on the screen. And last one is enabling the focus-based navigation. So this is mostly when users using external tools <clears throat> to navigate via, navigate through our application, for example, keyboards to make sure that when they are performing navigation via keyboard arrows to make sure that they are going to the right component on the screen. So uh, in terms of guidelines, this is the guideline from material design. So in terms of uh, touch target size, it needs to be 48 by 48 depth. So 48 height and 48 width, it's like a minimum requirements. And, and then there is another requirement, which is like a color contrast ratios for all the text that we have in our application. So if, if we are using large text, which is like 40 points or 18 point, size then it needs to be like a three by one against the background so if it, the background is white and a, or color, a text color is like quite light gray or something like that and if it's failing we need to make sure that we are using the proper color values so that it <clears throat> it passes this kind of uh, like the minimum criteria which is mentioned by design uh, material design and for small text the ratio is 4.5 by one So uh, next thing is, um, re this is, uh, I just added this slide, I guess, uh, when I'm <clears throat> working on some designs by my, like my side project kind of thing. So if you are a designer, like yeah, you are using Figma, like mostly companies are, they are using Figma. So there is a really cool plugin, which is called A11Y color contrast checker. So in this example, like I'm drawing a flag and I have some colors in there. So we need to <clears throat> like, I select that component and then, then just run this plugin. And if if there is any con color contrast issues in there, it fails, otherwise it, it passes. So it's like mostly at that design level, we have a chance to make sure like as a designers, we can make sure that we are using the colors that are accessible. So now we will see the XML based implementation, as I mentioned earlier, like we will see both worlds, like the first, this is like the old way of doing the user interface development in Android. And then we will see the composed ones. So the first is adding content description. So this is also like um, labeling user interfaces. So 
in XML, we declare image view, then we add a couple of components. And if you see the rectangular highlighted com property, which is content description. So that's the basically the label for this image view. This image view is on the screen, this uh, logo thing under the hello world. So when it's selected, it will like the system will speak that information for us so that user knows that this is like a logo for the, this is the description for that logo. And, <clears throat> and even like, um, that's like a, some sort of like a static description, but if we want to set like a custom content description, we can go through like a programmatically. So in this case, example is how we can set it using Kotlin. So I'm accessing the image view. That's the ID of our image view from our XML layout file. And then we call the content description setter and then provide the description. It's basically if we want to provide some sort of dynamic content description based on certain conditions. And next is um, adding uh, headings to our text views. So this basically means is like if users are using the tools like Talkback or screen readers and they enable the heading based navigation in, uh, in those tools so that they can navigate through our screens if we have attached headings to our com uh, specific text view components, this is this is only available for API 28, which is Android 10. So below versions, it's not there yet, but it's helpful in case of, uh, for example, we have terms and conditions screener uh, in our application and it has a lot of text. So rather than going through all those text components, we can just set the terms and conditions like uh, headers so that users can navigate or skip those long paragraphs so easily. They can navigate back and forth between different components on the screen. This is again related to the labeling uh, content. So it's a similar, so sometimes we don't like, we have like a, just a decorative components on our screens. For example, in this case, the top logo, I don't, I want it to be a focused so we can set the screen reader focusable property set to true, which, which is again available for Android 10 or higher, but we can also set the focusable. But these two properties are just like kind of uh, optional. Like if we set the content description that automatically makes this component to be focusable in uh, screen reader mode when like user is using any, any sort of tools. Uh, next example is grouping of related content. So you might have seen that sometimes, uh, like not sometimes, like most of the times we have most of the applications, they have a content in like in form of list, like list of items. And each item is uh, contains like uh, some uh, uh, X number of components. So in this case, if I say like, um, under the image, like the third component on the screen, which says now sync, so this is basically like the linear layout. So I have two components in there. So if I don't, uh, if I don't say uh, like a group these two together, it will go through one by one, which is like now, then it goes to the sync, but now it processed that as like a single component. So how we can achieve this is like, we set the focusable or screen reader focusable at the parent layout, which is like linear layout, which is parent of these two text views. So that's like, basically we are informing the system that I need to process these, all the children's like as a single component and then setting the foxable as a false on, on the children's of this particular parent. And next is accessibility live region. So this is basically how we want to process dynamic changes in our screens. So in this case, if you see under the password, we show error, but this is just for the demo purpose, but there might be any other components or this error is based, shows up on based on certain conditions. So <clears throat> we have three options like polite, none or assertive. So the default is like none, or I can say, I think it's polite, which is like, Currently, if TalkBack or any tool accessibility service, whatever it's processing, it will process that first. 
and then it comes to this view when user is navigating through different components but if we set the zerty then in that case it will be processed aggressively that means like if whatever component is currently the system is processing it will stop processing that one and immediately process this particular component when it appears on the screen so um, the next is decorative elements as i mentioned earlier like if we don't want to process any component if we don't provide won't provide any accessibility information for any component we can set important for accessibility to no it takes two parameter values like yes or no <clears throat> so i don't in this case i after hello world if you see on the screen it immediately goes to the now thing instead of selecting that image so this is because of this particular property i'm setting it to accessibility to no but there are other ways like we can set the content description to null and it will be automatically skipped. But this is like more uh, readable and easily understandable from coder, coders or developers perspective that this component, we don't want it to be accessibility. Uh, we don't want to expose it to the accessibility services. And in this case, I don't have the demo attached to this slide, which is like how we can ha <clears throat> handle the custom focus handling so if we want to put, uh, have some sort of like a custom focus uh, navigation, sport, want to support focused navigation, uh, in that case, we have a couple of properties, which is like next focus, left, right, up, down, and forward. So if we want, by default, uh, it um, tools, they process the layout as it's laid or as it's, the, um, as it's, um, meant uh, written in the layout file which is like top to bottom so if we want to change the focus like we want to go from second component to third and then from third to let's say uh, any n um, like a six or seven whatever so we can change the focus based navigation behavior using these properties so we can set the id so in this case i am setting like right up down go to hello world and then if the focus is focus forward then goes to image logo holder. This is basically like based on the requirements wherever you want to go on these focus changes. And then you can provide the IDs of that particular view in the related properties. So this is really uh, one uh, nice article that has been written. I will share the slides afterward that if you want, you can read it. Uh, next thing is traversal order. So the default order is from top to bottom, which is like it's top to bottom, but it's like a left, right, and then again goes to the left, right, thing like that. But if we want to change it, then we have two properties like traversal after and then traversal before. So in this case, this text view two in on that one, I am setting the properties like traversal after like after the password field. If you see error is already on the screen, but after password, it immediately goes to text view two instead of error. This is because I set the properties like after password, it needs to process this one. So it skips the error component and then traversal before based on your requirements. Um, next we have custom actions. So this is helpful in case of um, like uh, if we have some sort of actions that are not exposed directly to accessibility services, for example, we have implemented swipe gestures in our applications like swipe left to delete or swipe right to archive, things like that. So if we want to expose those fun like that, those uh, like those sort of features to uh, folks when they are using accessibility services to interact with their application, we can expose those as like a actions like a uh, specific to related to uh, like uh, accessibility services so we can use the api called add accessibility actions from view compat and it takes three parameters view label and the action like what we want to do so view is basically the id of that component and label is like what the system will speak or or can like a <clears throat> what it's a spoken feedback about that one and then the command here is like basically what we want to do with the like what do we want to trigger any sort of action on that particular custom action. So in this case, I added this action to the image view and then 
system will say like there are custom actions there is no sound in the in uh, this output file but it basically says custom actions available and then it goes to the actions and from there it shows all the available actions as you see like actions and then you see there it's a single action which is called favorite So um, next we have understandable actions. So, so the by default, like the default behavior of um, tools like TalkBack is like when it says like double click, uh, sorry, for click it says like double tap and yeah, double tap to activate. And then I think for long click, it says double tap and hold for long click. So if we want to provide like a more contextual kind of uh, text, then we can use the if, uh, API called replace accessibility action. And again, it takes three parameters like the view to which we want to attach this particular, uh, where we want to replace the ex action, then the action itself. So in this example, I say like action long click and then the label. So the label is basically what to say instead of, in this case, it will say double tap and hold to favorite instead of saying like double tap and hold for the action, whatever. And there is another way of actually achieving the same thing. So we we use the accessibility delegate compat. We override this new, like the function, which is on initializing the node info. And in here we define, in this case, I define the action, like action click. And then we add that delegate to the view that we want. So, in this case, when a user taps on that check details, if you see under in the in the demo, it says check details button, and then it says like double tap to check balance details. So instead of saying like double tap to activate, it says like double tap to check balance details. So it's like more informative for the for the user. So there are like basically two ways of achieving the same thing. So Recently, Google announced Android 14 and there are a couple of new APIs that are launched in there. So we will go through a couple of, uh, like what are the changes that are introduced with the 14. So the first, it's uh, accessibility data sensitive. So again, there is a really uh, helpful article that can help you understand why we need this API. So now on the specific component, we can set the accessibility um, data sensitive field to yes. So what does that mean is like, it's basically the detail that I already added on the screen in the slide, sorry. So it says like the view should allow interactions from accessibility services only if the service sets the is accessibility tool property. So, <clears throat> The article that I attached here is basically like some hackers, they are like ex using the accessibility services to hack some banking applications in uh, some Asian countries. So this is the like a providing extra protection. So when we are using the accessibility data sensitive property on our, uh, our uh, fields, then these fields are only um, processed by the services which are verified by Play Store. So for example, TalkBack is by Google, which is already verified. So then this field can only be processed by those kind of services which are verified. So if any uh, developer, let's say, somehow able to install any uh, hacker, like a buggy application or like a hacking tool sort of application in your uh, phone and the, it's not verified, then this, this particular component will not be exposed to those kind of services because those are not verified by play. So this is just like power, some sort of a providing a little bit extra security around a particular fields. And this is really helpful in cases of like, a, like a passwords or if we are asking user for enter their credit card information, things like that. Uh, next is like um, that there is a new uh, method I can say or the new capability that is now available starting with Android 14. It's also called upside down cake. So if you see the if condition, 
in here we now we can set the request initial accessibility focus so <clears throat> If we by default, as I mentioned, it's uh, the the first component will get the focus when the stockback service is enabled. But if we want to customize that, we want to custom like a uh, go to any particular component. We want that to be focused when the service is enabled. Then we can set the request initial accessibility focus and then <clears throat> pass the view like use this uh, like a uh, use that this particular delegate with the view so for example in this case i have added it to the fab button so like this is the fab on my screen so i added the accessibility delegate and request the initial accessibility focus for my button instead of any other components yeah, so the next is uh, next change or the um, the feature from Android 14 is throttling the content changes events. This is really helpful <clears throat> when we are using any sort of, uh, we have functionality, for example, we are <clears throat> using timers or progresses or as there is a, like a seek information if we have some sort of video player in our applications. So by default, it uh, like the system, whenever there is a change, it provides the feedback to the user, which might be annoying. For example, if we are playing video and it provides every time the seek information about the video's progress. So if we now with this new API, we can set the min duration and we can set it to whatever time, like whatever we want. So in this case, I'm setting it to like 10 seconds. So whenever there is changes, for example, in timer, uh, now instead of each on each second, it will now convey the information after every 10 seconds. Um, and next is like, <clears throat> now Android is supporting nonlinear font scaling up to 200%. So I will show you later how we can test these changes to make sure that our UI is not broken. But this is something new, which is introduced with Android 14. And uh, you can find it under the display settings in uh, in the Android device. Next, we will go through some more, uh, um, like <clears throat> through the imp same implementation, but with the new framework, which is right now, like the recommendation to use by Google or some also already used by almost, I can say most of the big companies as well as all the Android devs are using it. It's a Jetpack Compose. As I mentioned, this is the new way of uh, uh, writing user interfaces for Android. So instead of declaring uh, XML based components, now this is the code which will generate the image for us. It takes two properties. So if we want to provide a content description, which is like, a, it's basically how we can label the interface components in Jetpack Compose. So in this case, this image, the first one I'm setting the content description to null, which means it's similar, like a, we are calling important for accessibility to know. So when the content description is null, it's will it will be skipped by the talk uh, services accessibility services like Talkback, and if we have provided the information, then it will be processed by the system. So for example, here in the second example, it says profile image. So <clears throat> the next one is heading. So as if you remember, like in the XML based implementation, the, the major limitation is like most of the time like the new features they are some sort of like there is a coupling with the platform so as i if you remember the head if we want to set heading in the xml based implementation we cannot you we cannot use it below api version 28 which is android 10 and there is like a still there is a market for android older versions for like android 9 8 7 whatever but with compose it's it's platform independent so there is like uh, it it supports all the way back to Android twenty one, API twenty one. So in a compose, how we can set the heading is basically there is a concept of called semantics. This is basically how we provide all the semantics related information to the system. So with the help of semantics, we can call the heading. And then it's just a system, like we are conveying the system that this component or this text is heading. 
and we don't uh, wrap this with any uh, sort of api check like if it's 21 23 because it's platform independent and same for a live region again in the semantics we set it to for example here i'm setting assertive if you remember we have other options like polite or none Uh, accessible description. So in this case, again with semantics, we are providing the text, which is like a text that will be pro that is like uh, accessibility services will uh, like that. For example, Talkback will speak when this component is selected. So if I don't provide this text under the semantics, it will speak the actual text of this component. So in this case, it will say dollar forty five forward slash day, which is like not a meaningful for the end users, right? Like 45 slash day, what is slash, right? So <clears throat> if we want to provide more helpful text so that it's easily understandable to the end users. So in that case, we can use the semantics. So we are exposing extra information to the system. So in this case, it will say $45 per day instead of the actual text. Um, so group of related content. So this is example for, uh, if you remember from XML, we have uh, like the linear layout, we set the set flexible and screen reader flexible to true at the parent level. It's basically a similar concept. So in this case, the linear layout, this is equivalent code to the linear layout in XML. So in this case, I have column, then I have three components in it and I want them to be processed as a, like a single entity. So if you see there at the column level in the semantics, I pass the property to true, which is merge descendants. So I'm selling the system that all these, all the children of this particular component will be processed as like a single entity. Uh, next, we have focus handling. So if you remember, we have next focus down, up, left, right, forward. So in, in case of compose, there is like, there is a different terminology that we need to use if we want to support a custom focus handling. So we need to create the focus requesters and then we need to attach those focus requesters to our components where we want to actually provide a custom where we want to customize the focus properties. So in this case, I created two focus requesters, item one and item two. And then in, in the images, like the in the screen, this is image one, this is let's say image two. So I added the focus requester item one to this image, then image second item two, focus requester and focus properties. There is a, a builder function that we can use on the focus requester. So on the modified, yeah. So we set like on left, this is basically like next focus left, go where to go. So I want to go to item two and next focus up, I just say cancel. That means like it will not perform, it will not navigate to up when it's user is performing focus up. So it will just stay in the current uh, component. It's the uh, same on the, this way, like, on left, go to item one and up, just don't do anything. And next example is of state descriptions. So <clears throat> by default, the system will say, for example, for uh, if you see that her, that little heart on my, uh, on the card, it says like favorite instead of saying checked or unchecked. If you see the code, I'm using icon toggle button. So it's like a toggle button. You will it's like a checked or unchecked. It's basically like a checkbox. So the default state, like the default system will say check or unchecked. But if you want to provide more helpful current state description, you can like check the state and provide the state description. That's the line after the on click. So state description is goes here. So it says it's based on the, I don't have the, actually, I think I'm missing the code for action label, but this action label is like a string based on the current state. So if is favorite, like if it's true, instead of saying like checked, it will say favorite. Otherwise it's like unfavorite. Now, even if you see in the screen, it says like um, unfavorite. So the current state is unchecked. It says unfavorite checkbox. 
and then it will say double tap to favorite it. And next we will go through a couple of the modifiers that helps us to make our user interfaces more accessible in, in Jetpack Compose. So the first we have here is um, selectable. So selectable is basically like the behavior of a radio button. So if you see on the demo side, I have item one, item two, item three, and then I have item one again. But if you see that label radio button with its own click listener. So if we don't use um, selectable modifier at the row level, then user, have only like a radio button. They need to specifically perform that touched uh, action on that radio button, in this case, item one. But if you see uh, the top three items, when I'm using the selectable at the row level, now you have like a more space to perform the action on those items. So if, if we want to provide like a more space to the user that they can perform the uh, radio buttons action, then we can use the, like we can make our comp full component selectable instead of radio button. So in this case, we just uh, use the selectable uh, uh, modifier and then set the role. Role is really important here because then system knows that how this particular component is gonna behave. So it says like not selected, double tap to select. And next we have toggleable. It's similar like a selectable, but this is more like a switch. So as you see here, the first example is in-app notifications, like the full row, instead of like just a one switch, which is like the second example next to it. So if you want to like uh, make your component uh, behave like a toggleable and provide more uh, like a freedom to perform the action to the end user. You can just uh, add the toggleable modifier, provide the role and then the, the all the properties that are required. And it will be like a full, now the full role behaving like a switch instead of just like a one little component as a switch. And uh, Next we have a clickable, it's basically if we want similar to other two components, but like if we want to behave, want to be add the click click behavior or the interact, make our component interactive, we can use the clickable and then provide the role like as a button. So it will say like double tap to activate and it wraps all the sub components to like uh, have the clickable behavior for the parent one. So I think, uh, yeah, here I have the click label example. If if you remember from the previous slides, like, so, this is basically uh, similar to understandable actions. So instead of saying like double tap to activate or double tap to deactivate or whatever, if we want to provide a more contextual labels for our actions, we can use the click label, uh, like the label property, and there are like two different ways. So in this example, <laughs> this is based on the semantics. So in this semantics, I provide the own click behavior and set the label based on this click label. So this click label is based on the favorite condition. If it's favorite already favorite, then this unfavorite, then take the, this is like how we access the string resources and then what to do just, and then return the, value because this function needs to return Boolean. So here I'm setting the click label on the icon. The second option is like with the clickable, it also has option for providing the own click label. So if you are not, uh, if you don't have, you are in a situation where you are not using clickable and you still want to provide the click label, you can use the previous example like the, with the help of the semantics. But if you are using the clickable at the, for example, in this case, you can provide the property on click label and it will be, as you see, it says double tap to modify account settings. 
So <clears throat> next is adding custom actions to composables. So this is again through the semantics because this is the this is the main kind of um, it's the standard way of adding all the semantic information to our composables. So in this case, it has property called uh, custom actions. It take a list of custom accessibility actions and each action has two properties, label and action, which is like label is again, what system will say and action what to do, like what we want to do. Maybe we want to perform any action or call any function when user perform that action. This is just like a similar example, how this look like if we have actions, talkback menu will show up, then there is actions and then go to the, when user perform double tap on that actions, they will see the all the list of custom actions available on the next screen. Uh, as you, if you remember like with Android 14, now there is a spot for uh, non-linear font scaling up to 200% in, in Android. So this is like a small example how we can actually preview our composables with different font scale. So there is a concept called multi-preview annotations because in Compose, everything is written in Kotlin. So we don't have a concept of like design or like in XML, we can actually see the design. So how we can actually achieve the same, like if we want to see how our UI look like during development, we can use the concept called previews. So whatever we want to preview, we wrap that composable with the preview annotation <clears throat> and it will render the, render the UI for whatever we have in that composable. So in this case, I have created like a sample multi preview annotation called preview font size and I declared like this is basically saying like group those all together. So wherever I am using preview font size annotation on any composable, it will generate four previews for me for all those different scales like 185, 115, and 30. Otherwise, I need if I don't use like a multi preview annotation like preview font size, then I need to define it on each level. Like if I want to preview 85%, then I need to use that one, then 115. So instead of like a duplicating same code with all those previews, now you can like, uh, we can group it together and use like a single annotation to generate multiple previews. And if you don't want to write by your hand, there is an option in uh, Android Studio next to the preview annotation. When we add the preview annotation, there is a settings gutter, like this little icon, which will show up in the gutters where we see all others uh, little icons. When you tap on it, you can customize like different preview properties. It says preview configuration, so you can change the font scaling here. So we have different options, 85 or whatever, and then you can also change other properties, whatever you want. So I can simply say you can just uh, forget that I just spoke about preview annotations for font scaling and all others. Because recently, like when I'm working on these slides yesterday, I found that with the version 1.6.0, they all, they, like the Android team, they provide us <clears throat> these pre-built uh, preview annotations. So if you want to test your composable or render your composable against the all the font scaling uh, options like uh, 100 to 200, whatever. So these are the standard preview annotations are added in the Compose uh, UI tooling preview library. So if you want to test in a light and dark mode at the same time, you can just use preview light dark. If you want to test a different, uh, if you want to preview in multi screens, like a different form factors, for example, tablet foldables, you can use the preview screen sizes. And if you are sporting dynamic colors, you can use preview dynamic color annotation. These are like, we don't need to write any code. We just use these in a pre-built uh, annotations. The next is traversal order. So it wasn't there initially, but uh, it was added in uh, Compose 1.5. And if you remember from XML, it's like next, uh, I think, uh, sorry, traversal after and traversal before. So in Compose, it's a little bit different. So it's uh, it's based on a traversal group and traversal index. 
So we need to set the boundary, which is like where we set the traversal group. So in this case, I am telling to the system that this column is going to be a traversal group. So you need to first process this group and then move to the next one. So I'm setting is traversal group again under the semantics. And then I'm setting the traversal index. So that property, it needs to be uh, floored and lower the lower the value means like the higher the presidency or the higher the priority. So in this case, I am actually using the same value. So that's why it's, it's not the right values that I'm using here, but it might be like a zero and then 0 0.2, then the zero one will be processed first. So as you can see in the example, so now after custom traversal order, you see it goes one, two, three, four. But if you see the uh, like the the top one, it's it goes like one, three, two, four, which is like without a traversal order. But actually, I want to go it through one, two, three, four. That makes sense. But if it goes like one, three, two, four, which is like the default navigation behavior of accessibility service that I don't want. So if you want to customize traversal order in Compose, this is the way to go. Okay, so we have now covered the basic implementation of accessibility in Compose and XML. Now we will go through the testing. So there are a couple of options. The first one is manual testing, which is like turn on any accessibility services in your uh, in your device and go from each and every screen to make sure that it works as expected. Then we have analysis tools. There are uh, we have accessibility scanner, especially it's uh, freely available on Google play. You can install it. And then, uh, I guess I, if I have time, I will quickly demo that afterwards. Then we have automated testing. Like <clears throat> if we are already writing espresso tests or RoboElectric tests in our uh, Android uh, code base, we can integrate the accessibility testing with those tests. I, I will show the code later. And the uh, next is user testing. This is basically like actually handing over application to the real users, those who have some sort of disabilities and just analyzing the behavior, like if they feel any sort of uh, hurdles or if they are some somewhere they feel stuck and they need any sort of help. And then we can just, uh, based on that feedback, we can maybe we need to change something on our designs or or like, um, but maybe changing the description of any components so that it will be easy for the end users. And the la last one is the pre-launch report. So <clears throat> this is a report, it's on the Play Store. So when we actually submit our application for pub publicly, for publishing to the Play Store, then before actually it hits the, uh, it's available for download, there is a, this report is generated by Play Store and it contains all the information and it also provides some, if there are any, <clears throat> any issues that are with the current submission, we can use this report and figure out like if there are some critical issues are there that we need, that we want to fix, we can still have time like actually to like just go back and fix those issues and resubmit your app and then go from there. Um, so yeah, this is the example for how we can actually enable the accessibility checks in espresso testing. So this is basically like the constructor code or in it means like it's from Kotlin. So this is the code that will run when the class is initialized. So in the init block, I'm using the accessibility checks. Um, this is provided by espresso accessibility library. So we need to add the dependency for that. And then after that, we enable it. And if you see in the first line, I am saying accessibility checks dot enable, then I'm setting the run checks from root view. So if you don't say set run checks from root view, what it does is like from where, whenever user is like, whenever a test is interacting with any components, for example, I'm saying like double tab on like, sorry, tab on uh, click on button one, then from that button one, it will process all the components like in the hierarchy. And let's say there are additional components that are that will be like that are like not uh, not the descendants, but they are like at the one level higher at the bottom or uh, button button one that will be skipped. So if there is any accessibility issues with those components, that will not be reported. Our test will simply pass because at that time they are already skipped. So if we want to 
process like the full layout if there are like 10 elements we don't care like which element we are currently interacting from our test then we need to set the run checks from root view so if there is any component is failing any sort of accessibility check our test will fail uh, in the second example is a city it's pretty it's a pretty much similar the thing is <clears throat> if we want to skip some checks or if we really don't want to fail our test on certain conditions so we can use the result matchers so in this i am i'm saying like if there is any text contrast this is like for color contrast issues this is the name for the for the checker che matcher which is like text contrast view check so i'm saying like if this is the issue and this is the view that is having that issue so in this case tv first name this is like a from text view from an xml file so if this particular view is failing the color contrast issue don't fail my test so it will be automatically skipped and if there is any other further issues then my test will only fail so again we have a like a ide sport there is really good sport and there are a couple of tools in android studio so if you are using android studio there is a layout validation then there is a visual linting then problem panel so when we have opened the layout files in an android studio it will show all the issues in there and recently with android studio iguana it's uh, still in canary so it's not uh, stable yet but there is a stable ui check mode uh, available for our composables so when we are previewing our composables there is a that little icon shows at the top of the composable so which is checking the ui for any related accessibility related issues in uh, android studio so yeah the that's all from my side these are a couple of references and let me check if my android studio is currently open i can show you uh, I think I don't. Okay, let me quickly open it. So here I'm already using Iguana. So, but I think I don't have, uh, yeah, I have previews. So, so in the meantime, when the project is currently running, I can quickly show you the, the tools that are available from Play Store. So if you see on my screen, these two little icons on the device, this is from the real device, right? Now I have attached the Google Pixel Pro 7. So I have installed the tool, it's called Accessibility Scanner, this one. And then most of the devices, they come with the talkback, but if it's not, then you can install the accessibility um accessibility suit from play store so let's say i open any random application in this case this one and i want to check if my <clears throat> my current screen is uh, passing all the requirements so i this is the icon basically from accessibility scanner when you tap on it you will see a couple of options like if you want to record the behavior or you just want to snapshot or if you want to turn off. So I want snapshot. I run it, it will capture my current screen. So it's just processing the result. As you see, there are five suggestions. So you can go through each and as you can see, it will show me like what are the actually issues with my components. So if says like the touch target is not enough for this particular view, then it says like this item label might not have or uh, readable by screen reader then text scaling things like that and this one is for a talk back so you just turn on and then navigate through each and every component to make sure that this is working as expected so the tool uh, the the problem uh, the next one is the problem panel which is shortcut is command 6 to open that so it shows all the problems that are currently available, like uh, there are in your currently open editor file so in this case i have opened the activity main so it shows me like this is like as i mentioned some of the properties only available for api 28 but 
if you see this one, it says missing content description on that image view. So this is already like already there is a little underline yellow line under this image view. So if I need to quickly fix this, you just go there and then. So now I'm setting the accessibility now. As I as soon as I mentioned, it will be removed from the problem panel. Okay, so the the last one is the visual linting. So the layout validation. So what it does is like it for the current layout file, it generates the different like all the layout previews for you and show uh mostly like attach if there are any issues so if you try like tap on this yellow angle little triangle it shows you what are the issues uh, available for different form factors or different uh for example in if this layout has any issues in foldable if this issue has in medium phone in medium tablet or desktop so yeah that's all so for example, in, in it says insufficient text color contrast, hard coded text, things like that. But this is really helpful if you are supporting multi-form factor in your Android applications, like you are targeting uh, tablets, foldables, desktop, or whatever. So yeah, that's all from uh, my side. Thanks, uh, thanks for attending. And uh, if you have any questions, we can go through. For sure. So thank you. First of all, thank you, Naf, for this amazing and informative presentation. Um, we do have a couple of questions. Um, the first question is, uh, they've asked, I'm new to Android development. Are you using Android Studio to develop, an Andro develop Android apps? Or like, do you also have suggestions for any other IDEs as well? So I I think the best one is Android Studio ID. It's freely available. Yeah. Right. But uh, uh, if you want to experiment, there is a fleet by JetBrains. But if that is mostly like if you want to develop for a multi-platform, for example, if you want to use Compose for iOS and Android, you can use fleet. It's, uh, it's really on the early stages, but yeah, that's uh, something if if people want to target multi-platform. But you can still use actually Android Studio with the KMM plugin that supports multi-platforms uh, coding or the development. But I would recommend to go with Android Studio. Good. Sounds good. Um, the next question is, uh, how do you gather information on which accessibility feature work well with people with disabilities and which ones need to be added or improved? Uh, with, mm, so for, for as a developer because I'm not directly interacting with the clients I can say but sometimes our testers for example at work sometimes they reported us issues like if there is a color contrast issues but if you are like in this question I think this is mostly question if we are if we are really interacting with those folks like we are handling like that's the example of user testing so if you really care, I can say, or you have enough budgets or resources to support that, you can maybe hire or give some sort of like incentives to like have a 10 users for your testing and then uh, go from there. Because then it helps you to understand like what you want to s provide support for. So if there is like a labeling issues or tasks here, like the flows issues, then you can analyze their behavior and then go from there. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Um, so if you have, if good people, if people have any more questions, you can put in the Q&A. Um, as of right now, I don't see any more. Oh, yeah. Uh, the first, the individual over here asks whether or not it can be okay if they connected with you on LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Um, I don't know if I can answer here, but I can quickly share my LinkedIn if you guys want. Uh, I will send the link uh, in the chat. Herman, you can share. Yeah. Right. 
Okay. okay. This is it's LinkedIn. Perfect. Okay. The last question is for me is the that one is for me as well. Yeah, for sure. You can connect with me on LinkedIn as well. My LinkedIn is over here. I hope you can see it in the chat. Let me know if you cannot. Um, yeah, do you have any more questions? Um, okay, I will take that. That, that. Okay, perfect, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so that concludes today's event. Um, on behalf of GDSC McMaster U, Nav, I would like to thank you for this amazing presentation, for taking the time and you know educating us all about how to work with accessibility in Android and how to use Compose um, and Android Studio to in include these uh, accessibility features. I would like to thank our attendee for attending this. Um, if you would like to view this recording, this record, the, the session again, this will be posted on the GDSC McMaster U YouTube channel probably within a week or so. And um, yeah, thank you once again for attending and uh, hope you have a great night. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. Thank you very yeah. much.